Hi guys, it's me Moons again. So in this video, I really wanted to talk about the fourth trimester in its entirety and what that actually means. Cause I think there's still a lot of people that don't really know what the fourth trimester is. So basically it's the 12 weeks after a baby is born. And obviously that's a hugely transformative time physically and emotionally for mother and baby. But I wanna just speak a little bit about the mamas in this one. Um, it's all about the mama love really in this series. Um, and for, from the beginning of time, it was always respected as a really, really, really important period in um, the mother's healing, processing, changing, adapting, um, resting, and it was really respected and still is in an awful lot of cultures. Um, the mother is, you know, told to, you know, rest and stay in bed pretty much solidly for that period um the village you know surrounds her feeds her helps her you know and she's really taken care of to allow herself to you know come back from the, both the pregnancy journey and the labor um and then in the west over the last quite some time now because it's very embedded um the bounce back culture came in and this ethos around, you know, getting back to your pre-pregnancy body and, um, you know, getting back to, um, you know, work really fast and getting back to life and, you know, snapping back and all these terrible phrases um, and putting us under so much pressure. But thankfully, there is kind of a lovely resurgence in, and I suppose it is heavily driven by the interest in well-being and our, our growing respect for our well-being that people are starting to really um, take note of this fourth trimester and respect that it is a sacred time. So the way I kind of, just to kind of, I suppose, encapsulate it uh, quite quickly for anyone that ever asks me, I always say, well, think of the, the word fourth, F-O-U-R-T-H. And each of those letters represents something that I can, I can speak to. So F, I always say F is for fluidity and just going a bit with the flow. I think there's so much pressure to have this perfect looking early motherhood days, um, which at the moment is being demystified an awful lot. Um, but it's really important just to be fluid and I suppose just to, you know, find our feet with our babies in, and in whatever way and in whatever time frame that takes and having, you know, a little bit more of a looser approach rather than trying to implement structure and routine um, and lots of, I suppose, parameters on us straight away. So that's F. O is for owning it. And by that, I mean body-wise. I think, you know, instead of being uncomfortable and, um, you know, maybe especially in previous days gone by, like having, you know, shame associated with excess weight or fluid retention and, scars I think nowadays there is thankfully the trend towards owning it and being really proud like you're a proud mar warrior mama that has like like you know like lovely scars that show a journey that she's been on like stretch mark scars or you know um c-section scars or whatever they are there are war wounds from not from a war because labor hopefully will be a beautiful experience but they are they're kind of um they are showing our journey, you know, they're marks on the map of the, the life path that we've gone through. So you should own it and just be a little bit more embracing of them. You is for unmet, unrealistic expectations. So a lot of us put expectations out there and especially then we're new mamas, we think, you know, the way it should be. That's my worst word. But thinking about, you know, oh, well, you know, I might, I should be here tomorrow and I should be here next week and this should be happening and the horrible should word is just thrown around all the time. And then when we don't meet those expectations, we have this awful sense of disappointment. Um, so just, I suppose, letting go of the expectation and assigning of, of, of time um, and duties and, and um, desires and just, I suppose, again, tying in with that fluidity, just being a little bit more accepting of how it'll roll out, whatever way it will roll out for whichever pregnancy, because different pregnancies, different bodies, different times are different. Um, or is for rest. Rest is best. If I can just keep reiterating that. Fourth trimester, 
napping, getting up late, staying in your jammies, embracing it because this might be your only pregnancy. Um, and definitely in this pregnancy, this is your only time to really like, you know, get that rest saturation. There's been a rest deficit, there probably will be one. So, you know, getting, you know, the help that you need in order to have naps in the day or maybe help with night times. Um, rest, rest, rest. Oh, I or after going through an incredibly hard time in pregnancy and then going through labor, rest. All about the rest in the fourth trimester. T is for having that gratitude. So thank you, the T for thanks. Thank your body, thank. Be so thankful for the ability to hold a pregnancy and to go through labor. Um, a lot of people can't. And it's just really nice to take some time in that fourth trimester to just acknowledge where you've been and where you've where you've gotten to and when we focus on that we tend to not kind of give out to ourselves for all the things that we're not doing you know because early motherhood days are probably like oh I'm not doing this and I'm not able for this and I can't do this flip that and just start to be you know work on that gratitude piece and be a lot more thankful h h is for help so this is the end of our f o u r t h ask for help i think us women are especially bad at it about putting up our hand and saying oh actually i really am drowning right now i need some help it doesn't have to be you know anything major going on but you just might be having a day where anxiety levels are high there could be something going on in the external world that's affecting you and triggering you you could just simply be exhausted or you could be physically having symptoms from labor or you know early postpartum symptoms that um you know with maybe fluid retention or pelvis issues so just ask for help reach your hand up reach your hand out and there's so many support services there um if you're going it alone and if you have a partner just you know asking them um you know and if they are in a position where you know they need to help ask help get them to ask someone else so just get the help that you need and don't suffer in silence you know breastfeeding if you go in that route don't i've seen so many people just kind of pushing through get the help of a lactation consultant you know if you're finding there's issues in the body get straight on to a specific um physio for a woman's health and yeah and i'm always here as well if you want to drop me a line i always have like a bank of people i'll refer on to um, which is really really important to me because I know my space but I also know what is in my space and I'll always be able to recommend you onto somebody that will be able to help with your specific question.